So the key differentiator between uh, the Fenix model and the Norma, the other machine that you've got here from yep. Korea, uh, one of the big factors is the Z-axis, isn't it? What's, tell us the difference. The Z-axis on this machine, the Fenix machine, is a 2.3 metres uh, stroke on the Z-axis. Uh, compared to the Norma L, which is a 1.5 metre stroke. Um, so, so some of your taller rotors, they taller you would rotors. be able to put them in a vertical exactly, plane? Exactly that. Uh, we also plan to do uh, other things such as M-frames, which are quite large castings, which you can machine over the top of the castings as well, which you've got the extra stroke. Now, now you've, you've got here an additional axis, should we say, or, uh, can, and, and this is, as it at the moment, is seated on the, on the bed of the machine, but can this be tipped up into a 90 degree angle? Yes, uh, that's, that's an, another variation from the Norma L. The Norma L uh, rotary tables are uh, integrated. This, we've uh, made a conscious decision to make this a horizontal vertical rotary table, so, and we plan to, to do this in future with take out the centre partition uh, on the pendulum machining and uh, use the full length of the bed to machine uh, down shaft work on, uh, on using the rotary axis in a vertical position. So you've got about a seven metre table here, so you could actually have almost that length of a, of a rotor, couldn't you? We will be doing. We're, we're planning to be using almost 100% of the uh, available uh, stroke on the x-axis and, uh, and we've got a certain job already planned in to uh, use that for capacity. It's one of the key benefits to this technology, this machine, is the fact you can have this sort of pendulum machining aspect as well as utilise the whole bed. But when I look at this machine, Tony, it's a, it's, it's a hell of a bit of kit. What about the foundations? Yes. What do you need? The foundation on this particular machine is probably two and a half metres deep. Um, there's probably a, a, a metre and a half of concrete down into the uh, to the base of the well. Uh, then, obviously, the um, machine bed itself is sat again on the, another half a metre of concrete on top of that. So overall, you've probably got a metre and a half, two metres deep of concrete uh, foundation. Now, and it's fair to say that, that that bed's not moving, but but the column is. The column is, is, yeah. is is there a, um, a a compromise in the ability or the stability of the machine by having that as a construction, or what do Correa do to counteract that? Because you're no. doing some pretty heavy machining. Yeah, yeah. The the travelling column machine actually is a more rigid machine than the Norma L uh, because of the, because of the travelling column. The whole column moves. So um, on the on the Norma L. Um, it's lighter machining uh, on, on that machine, uh, although they can both do relatively the same functions. This is more heavy duty machine tool. And the spindle technology that you have on here, it's a big part of Correa's pitch these days, yeah. the, the heads that they offer. Um, you've got a, 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 a 50 taper head here, 6,000 RPM, is that, is that right? Is it? Yes, it's the same head as on the Norma L. It's the same uh, UAD head with 6,000 RPM on the spindle. It's got the latest Hyden Iron 640 control, um, which again has got some bespoke functions that are um, in the PLC that are generated by Courier uh, to utilise the head functions. And, and with what you're doing, the machining you're doing, is this is this a, a positional head as well then, or is yes. this a, a, no, a no, it's, it's, it's a full 360 degree positional uh, working axis, you know, so it's. Uh, uh, gives you more benefit than uh, just a just a, a rotary axis or such. Um, I look at this machine as well. You've got a tool changer. You've got a, a, a column where the operator sits. These are all differences to some other machines, aren't they? Yes. That helps with the operator. That helps him be able to to not only witness what's happening, but from a setting perspective as well. Yeah, that's one of the uh, benefits that we've seen over the Norma L. The Norma L, we're predominantly we're going to be using for cubic work. Um, you know, so, uh, but one of the disadvantages of the Norma L is that the operator is situated at the front of the machine, so if, he, if you're machining on the back of a component, it's not, easily, it's not easy to uh, visualise where the cut's going to take place. This machine, the operator is, is situated looking directly at the uh, cutting tool, so it gives, it's another advantage, you know, you can see where the tool's uh, going to be positioned and the cut's going to take place. What sort of depth of cut would you be taking on something like this, Tony? Um, what would you push this, it to? On this, we're to probably taking around about a 10 millimetre depth of cut. Um, and the material is? Uh, the material's uh, 90, 60 carbon steel. 
you know. Okay, so so not an easy material no, to machine. No, no, it's no, it's uh, you know, but it, on on a on a, on a uh, component like this, it's a little bit of unknown because it's a cast component. So any of these radiuses and blends that you can come in, you can end up with more than the estimate on the initial cut. You can end up end up with more than the uh, anticipated um, uh, amount of material. Um, final point, DTS, some installation here just a few days in, if it will go smoothly? Yes, <laughs> as good as as good as could, as could be expected, you know, uh, the, the fact that we're relatively up and running within a week of uh, a major installation, it, it, I, kinda, I think it kind of speaks for itself.